I've been to the zoo. I said I've been to the zoo. Mister, I've been to the zoo. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? I went to the zoo and then I walked until I came here. Have I been walking north? Um, what do you say? I wonder if it's sad that I never see the pretty little ladies more than once. I've never been able to have sex with her. Do I make you nervous? I mean, how do you put it? Make love to anyone more than once. Once, that is. Well, no. There was a... You know, they keep me in the corner so she could talk to me. The smell of her body and her breath. You can't imagine it. Oh, and somewhere, somewhere in the back of that pea-sized brain of hers, an organ developed just enough for her to eat, drink, and admit she has some foul parody of sexual desire. And I, Peter, I am the object of her sweaty lust. That's horrible. That, that's disgusting. But I found a way to keep her off of me. Whenever she talks to me, she presses her body to me and mumbles about the room and how I should come there, I merely say, but love, wasn't yesterday enough for you and the day before? And then she puzzles, she makes slits of her tiny little eyes, she sways a little, and then Peter, it is at this moment I think I am doing some good in this tormented house. A simple-minded smile begins to form on her unthinkable face. She giggles and she groans, and she thinks about yesterday and the day before. And then she begins to believe and relive what never happened. <laughs> then she motions for that black monster of a beast that she has, and she goes into her room, and I'm safe until our next meeting. It's so unthinkable. It's, it's hard to imagine that people like that really are. It's for reading about, isn't it? But, you know, as you say, fact is better left to fiction, Peter.